Okay, so first off, I just want to uh, apologize for my appearance and the way I sound. Um, today I am fighting off the flu, so that's why you might hear a little bit of bleh, <clears throat> you know, here and there. But I am not going to let it deter me from my mission, which is to bring you guys the top five podcasts that inspire creativity. And um, this is actually, this is number five. We're at number five, finally. So. So this is an interview with one of my favorite new guitar players. His name is Matthias Eklund. Um, some of you know him by Matthias Ia Eklund. And he is of the band Freak Kitchen. He's also a solo artist. He's a producer. He is known as a guitar player, but he plays many instruments. And um, he sings as well. He's super accomplished, super innovative. Uh, he is, in my opinion, one of the few artists out there these days that is really pushing the envelope and, and creating something new and refreshing. Um, granted, I haven't heard everything that's coming out right now, so if you have anything that you can suggest, please send it my way. Let me know in the comments for sure, because I'm always looking for new music. But anyway, this interview was done via a French podcast called The Guitar Channel. The interviewer's name is Pierre Jonel. And it is a very engaging and entertaining and just kind of very inspiring interview. So the reason I chose this one uh, as the last podcast to check out is because the main theme of this whole podcast is about going your own way, finding your own sound, and kind of ignoring everybody else and just following your own specific vision, which at the end of the day is, is key, is essential for any musician or any creative type. Even though we all kind of know that, we've all kind of heard that, it's just super uh, encouraging to hear it again and again, especially from people that you look up to. So in this case, for me, I look up to an artist like Matthias. And not only does he cover you know everything from his career and how he got started to how he got onto the path of you know, carving out his own career on his own terms, but he talks about the way that he, you know, produces his music versus how everybody else does and how he gets, you know, so tired of like the, the industry standard when it comes to modern music production and a lot of other stuff that I can't remember right now because I'm sick, sorry. Actually, I think it's better just to check out this uh, two minute segment where Matthias just breaks down his entire musical history because he just does a better job of it than I could, so check this out. And uh, music-wise, what is your history? Mm. Yeah, well, I, it started out with Kiss when I was six years old. Uh, I wanted to be Gene Simmons and drool blood and spit fire and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so? But yeah, well, so I, I did that for a couple of years, <laughs> to drool blood and spit fire. <laughs> and uh, then I discovered uh, Frank Zappa, um, mm -hmm. and it changed my life forever. And it was like, good God, you can also do this on stage. You, you know, you don't have to... Uh, again, Spitfire, uh, but it would be great to Spitfire and then play the Black Page uh, and so on. But and then I discovered uh, Miles Davis and Django Reinhardt and Metallica and Slayer all at the same time, and I liked everything. To me, it was about good music or bad music or shit music. You know, uh, it was just like, yeah, okay, I like this. So and and um, I think you can mix. And I think you can hear all of these different elements, you know, folk music, uh, uh, traditional folk music from the Balkans, a a Asian stuff and, and metal and whatever in Free Kitchen's music. We're a big mess of, of many, many things. So, but it started out with drums when I was six years old, switched to guitar when I was early teenage uh, years and quit school when I was 15, just sat home and practiced and, and wrote music. Moved to Copenhagen when I was 19, and uh, since then I've, I've lived on it uh, for 21 years. And the last 10, 12, 15 years has been really, really good. The first first couple of years were really hard. I was struggling to, to make money. But I've always written my own music, no cover music or nothing like that. And I've traveled Earth so many times. I've been in all around the planet uh, a million times everywhere from South Korea to Indonesia, Japan, India, Borneo, Malaysia, China, uh, whatever, Mexico, France, uh, France many times, Vive la France. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, um, and when you travel enough times, you realize it's a very small planet, you know, and you come back and say, oh, that's you again, the Swedish guy. Oh, great, you know. Okay, <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. So we need to buy your damn album now. So, and they do, and I start making more money, and my first uh, solo album on Free Guitar. 
it sold so well in, in Southeast Asia. I just bought myself a house for the family, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because I own the copyright and everything returns to me. The money returns to me. Um, so I make my good money. I have a, live a very comfortable life in the Swedish woods with my, with my son and my wife and my French dog and three crazy cats and mm -hmm. have my own studio and a little forest and three fireplaces and, and it's, just, it's just very nice. Mm -hmm. So that's my musical history in two minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Excellent. I just think it's super important because it gives you a sense of an artist who has been able to, you know, create his own career on his own terms, doing music that is not exactly, you know, commercial, and yet he makes a good living on it. Um, it's just super inspiring for people like myself to, to hear about. You know, some other takeaways would be at the, like the 12 minute-ish mark, maybe 12.15, where he starts talking about modern music production. I was, I mean, I discovered the, the So Your Music through the latest album, and I was very impressed about the, the production of it. It is very well produced, but in a good way, not too overproduced, but the sound is still very dry you can hear everything and I mean it's, and of course I mean uh, the main point is that the I think the songs are great and it's a very um, was it the definitive uh, uh, idea from you to have a you did you have a specific sound in mind when you yes. pro started the album yeah very much and I'm very grateful uh, you think that you were saying these things because I think you you made me a happy man because this is exactly what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to sound well. I wanted you to co be able to compare it soundwise to a Steely Dan album or something like that. Say, yeah, this is a, I mean, it's not the same kind of music, but this is a well produced album. And the thing is, I worked on the album for three years, over a period of three years. I didn't work for three years. Mm -hmm. I, that's why I think many people think that, oh, on the New for Kitchen album, it took three years, it's going to be overproduced and it's going to yep. be a dead album. Mm -hmm. But I think it's the most raw and, and energetic album we ever done because I wanted to have the good takes. I wanted to have the energetic takes and I could do like uh, two hours of vocals and then I wouldn't sing for a week and build up all this energy and then push record for another two hours and go bah, instead of this factory kind of thinking where you work in a, in a studio that you rent that costs you a lot of money we have to do this we have to do this mm -hmm. and now we have to do this and it's just a machinery I worked when I felt really inspired and I felt I had stuff to say and I was really uh, you know committed to that uh, and it took me a long time to, to get the production right. And the thing is, we, I was so happy with everything, and we mic the drums very well, a million mics and ambient mics to get a good, decent drum sound, no trigging, nothing faked, you know, uh, well-played instruments and so on. Um, so, and we did a great mix, and then we came to the mastering session, and uh, you have your local mastering genius, you know, putting all the compression and everything. And it took me four versions before I was happy, and the fourth one was just... Don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Just open up a little treble, uh, cut some some bass here and there, and 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 uh, just bring it up to so it's as loud as everybody else. And then I was like, yeah, you don't fix what's not broken, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. it's like it was good enough as it was. Mm -hmm. So and I'm very happy with it. Today there is this really really weird. Uh, you know, way to record them. They're supposed to sound in a complete way with a lot of compression to keep yeah, everything, everything as loud as loud, in yeah. your fame. Mm -hmm. And I hate that. You grow so tired of listening to it. I'm, I'm very happy I had the guts to back off and say, no, I do not want this. I've done this for, recorded this album for three years. I know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you say, this is how it sounds today because tomorrow something else is, you know, the way it sounds. So I said, fuck it. You know, don't do anything. Just leave my album be. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm really happy with the end result. Really happy. Another takeaway would be around the 15 minute mark, like 15 and 49 ish, where Pierre and Matthias get into the subject of keeping your focus on a project when it spans over like a long period of time. And how were you able to keep the, the focus? I mean, the idea uh, the same for three years. I mean, uh, maybe the risk, you, you, you run the risk to get lost. I mean, yes. oh, I'm going to yeah. try this. Yes. And I uh, realized after, well, I mean, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I like your questions. Nope. They are, I, I, really, I really do. Okay, I I, yeah, it, yeah, because this is a thinking man's question. It's like, yes, uh, because this is the stuff I think of myself. You know, how... How do I not lose track of what I'm doing here? Because it's so easy to... Uh, and the thing is, I, 
that's what time is doing. You work on something like crazy, an arrangement, mm. and wow, and this, and I add this, and it's starting to get like a cluster feeling, and it's so cool, it's so interesting, it's so intellectual, and so on. You take a day off, you listen to it, you turn it on again, and you realize, <laughs> what is this? No. I didn't get, <laughs> I, fu- I, I fucked up the song. <laughs> there was a good song before this one, and then it's so hard to kill your darlings, but you have to, it's like, Man, I may a- be able to use this arrangement somewhere else, but right now, it has to go. Delete, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was so well done, it was so well played, but it do not belong in, in the song, you know. And, and that is heartbreaking every time. But I, and that is what I did with each song. I said, what, how, do I, how do I dress up this song, you know? How, how do I do to make this one work? And that is what producing is all about. And I need time to figure out in, in order not to lose track. You know, I need to figure out what's hiding behind the corner, what I need to push it, what I need to keep interest, um, when to back off because it's just getting too much. You know? mm-hmm. And that's a tricky part. And I think, I think, I hope I succeeded. Uh, I think I did. I mean, give it, give it five years and I may say differently. But right now, it just feels good because it was a tricky album to produce. Personally, I I relate to this one a lot because I've put out two solo records. The first one was out in 2009, and then the second one didn't come out until 2018. There was a whole list of reasons why, and obviously, like, you know, nine years go by, there's a lot of life events that can occur from, you know, moving to going to school to establishing a career, all that sort of stuff. But that whole time, it was like it was like an endurance test with maintaining your your original vision and keeping your focus on that without letting it go off the you know go off track too much. Um, so I found this little segment to be super super helpful to hear, just kind of reaffirming and just kind of comforting, I guess, if that makes sense. <laughs> 